The great mansion looks out onto the tumultuous Atlantic Ocean. Below, in the town of Collinsport, anxious residents rush to the safety of their homes for another series of mysterious nocturnal attacks has begun. The police say it is that strange animal back again, but the one who inhabits the old house knows better. He knows that Roxanne Drew has somehow returned to unleash terror at Collinwood. Welcome to Terror at Collinwood. I am your hostess, Danielle, a.k.a. Penny Dreadful. And folks, you are in for a treat because I have the one and only Donna Wandry here. And she has a lot of great things to say. Uh, And just to add an extra layer of coolness to this, I recorded this interview within the haunted halls of Collinwood itself uh, over at Seaview Terrace during uh, Memorial Day. But before we get to that great interview, I have some news for you. Make sure you jump on over to the YouTube channel for Terror at Collinwood on June 27th, which is the 57th anniversary of Dark Shadows, for a special Terror at Collinwood giveaway. I'm going to be giving away a box of prizes. Here's the deal, though. You have to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you have to comment on the giveaway video when it goes up. Those are the two things you have to do. You'll be able to comment on the video for a week and then I'm going to close the comments at that point. So it'll go up starting on the 27th and it will run until 4th of July in order to be entered into the giveaway. Um, I'm totally stealing this from my friend Raymond Castile. It's the way he does it. You have to subscribe to the YouTube channel and you have to post a comment. This is going to go up on June 27th, 2023. It will be up for a week. It'll be a video. I'm going to show you what the prizes are. It's a box of prizes. Uh, Somebody's going to win them. You're entering into a raffle for this, okay? So if you listen to the audio version of the podcast, jump on over to YouTube, subscribe to the Terror at Collinwood YouTube channel, and leave a comment on the giveaway video when it goes up on June 27th, 2023, and you'll have a week to comment on the video. And of course, the prizes are Dark Shadows prizes. And also, speaking of that, please let your friends know about the podcast. If you have friends who are into Dark Shadows or Dark Shadows Curious, or if they're just into spooky stuff or pop culture in general or classic horror, etc., tell them about the podcast because uh, they might just dig it. Thank you very much for listening, and let's get to the show. I can't wait. There's nowhere to run, there's no place to hide. This podcast is fun, but there are spoilers inside. I am here with the one and only Donna Wandry, an actress who has performed in many stage productions and on television in shows such as As the World Turns, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, and is beloved by Dark Shadows fans around the world for her portrayals of both versions of Roxanne Drew, the parallel time Roxanne, and the vampire Roxanne. Welcome, Donna, to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. It's always delightful to see fans, to see people who who still care, have such a good time, and it's always a surprise. Oh my goodness, what, what an honor it is to get to talk Thank with you. you. Um, Thank you. Now, you are still very active in the theater scene. You were recently in a play, uh, Fastened to the Moon, uh, yes. in New York. So could you talk a little bit about this show you were in recently? Well, the, my favorite thing that I have to say is that quite recently, Harrison Ford was at the Cannes Film Festival, and they asked him how he felt about still working at his age. And his response was, I could be dead, but I'm still working. And there are times I feel like that. <laughs> it's very hard uh, to continue any version of a career, though I'm glad my real love is stage, and that's how I started. Uh, I joined a theater company, uh, a union, Equity Theater Company, a few years ago called American Renaissance Theater Company, and they produce only new work done by their writers and directed by people then in the company that are their directors, and then they choose generally, if they can find the right casting, the men and women in the company to to act in their productions. Every year, the Jerry Kaufman Award, he was named 
a wonderful man who lived a, a bit ago and is no longer with us. There is money that was left to this company to produce a full-length play every year, just one, for things that had been workshopped. So we have meetings uh, most every Tuesday. People bring in work and they work on it. We contribute to it. We uh, question it. We act in it. We read it. And this show won the award. So I call the time when we should have done it BC, and it was before COVID, and all of a sudden it was COVID. So finally, uh, in the fall, we got to do uh, Linda Campley's production of Fasten to the Moon. And, and it, it's quite wonderful as an actor, if you've gotten older and you know what you're doing and everything is in the casting, and if you're cast correctly, you're given free reign of course, the director will say, oh, my goodness, don't do that. Uh, but you're really given free reign because you're inventing a character for the first time. And it's unusual because otherwise I've always played people in the theater that other people have played. So Fasten to the Moon was wonderful, uh, a, a kind of outrageous story. And I'm the mother in a dream sequence. Okay. And believe me, she still does the twist. Huh. She's she's absurd. She's not who she you think she is. But it's a pretty little black and white dress and pearls and earrings. And I insisted on white gloves. And you're just surprised at what comes out of her mouth. Of course, in the end, she saves her daughter by being in the dream. Oh, uh, yeah, so it was yeah. great fun. Yeah. Uh, recently, I did um, something for them that we also worked on, and it's called A Wider Sock. Now, it's a seven-page monologue, and I thought if I can still learn seven pages of a monologue, I'll keep working. And we are going to do it on a Zoom. I'm actually cutting in here uh, because the dates for the show have changed. Um, it is now on July 22nd and 23rd, 2023, and the show is called New York Stories. It's at 7 p.m. both evenings. So I can get you some information if people Please want do. to do. And and it's, it's a wonderful true story. And again, another woman who is not me at all who's a lot of fun and really good, really good at what she does. And uh, it, it was a, a great, marvelous thing to do it at a salon. So we had sal a salon on Sunday, invited 25 people, and they all came. And it was such a hit that the man who wrote it said, we're doing this. So we're learning in this theater company that's been around for quite some time to market ourselves to get out more on what you're doing now, Zoom, podcasts, um, you know, to reach more people. But really, it's live theater. Yeah. It's live theater. Oh, yeah, there's nothing like it, right? No. Let's talk a little bit about Dark Shadows. Was, was yes. Dark Shadows your first it was, it was my first television. Uh, I had done a commercial or two, but it was my first television uh, show. I had mentioned at one of the gatherings what was funny was at that time, if you were a stage actor, you went to, I went to HB Studio in, in the city, it's still there, uh, Herbert Berghoff, Uta Hagen. People thought you sold out if you did a television show. They really did. So I thought, but I have a contract. I'm going to get paid. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, and I, I don't think they were totally delighted, but the teacher said, you take it, you run with it. God bless Alice, the teacher. She, she was wonderful. And she said, I don't, don't, don't mind, you know, what your fellow classmates say. Don't, don't mind it. How long can you hold out for a job if you've come to New York to get a job in acting? Yeah. So it was my first. It was my first biggie. When you went uh, to the audition, do you remember what that experience was like? I, I mentioned to some of the people yesterday uh, when we were having a Q and A. The thing that was interesting was somehow. I mean, it, we got narrowed down to a blonde, a brunette, and me, and we were all sweet people. Yeah, you get cast. I was always cast as sweet people. And then they wanted a little nastier. And I think the other two women 
were a little surprised, <laughs> but I had I had played strange ladies before, and it doesn't look like it coming out of my face. So it never looked like, I, I mean, if something was wrong, you know, if I was playing one of those nasty Roxanne's, it was sort of like, eh, but that's Roxanne. Yeah. She looks nice. <laughs> she wouldn't hurt you. Mm. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I didn't really know I was going to be a vampire. Uh -huh. I, I did not know until time went on, and that was surprising. Yeah, because for, at first your character was in this uh, sort of comatose state. Yes, I didn't think I was going to speak forever. Right. right. I was just lying there in that blue yeah. nightgown. Yeah. Um, no, and, and I wasn't given a lot of backstory, mm -hmm. so I didn't even know until I was done that I was put together from parts of Barnabas's loves. I didn't even know it. So it was kind of fascinating, and I thought, I didn't mind not knowing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know how I could have even worked that in. Like, I didn't know. So you create what you can create. The director likes it or doesn't, and we go from there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're given a blank slate and something to, yeah. to yeah. build from. Uh, and your character was... Uh, Sort of a psychic. Uh, oh, for a while there, wow. she was a psychic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Tarot cards and, yeah, and, and right. all sorts of stuff like that, yeah. which was so unlike this other woman that I was. I, mm -hmm. Even the clothes and the. <laughs> I, it, it was strange. I mean, yeah. boots and a, <laughs> a, a skinny skirt, big earrings. And right, right, right. Very, right. very different. Very different. And then. Kind of fun to play. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And especially then you got to play the vampire version of Roxanne. Right. Uh, in the present day. And then we do a. In the past, you find out how she became a vampire. Right. And I tell you, I, yeah. the fans know more than I do. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, it was very interesting. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they were putting uh, a ton of curls in the back of my right, hair. Right, right. And you were nipped into a long dress and petticoats. And it was, oh, and then I had a sister. And then and everything. Were you aware that Dark Shadows was this type of, of show, that it was supernatural um, stuff and everything? I tell you what, I was... I didn't really know, mm -hmm. and and then I kind of understood it. But the thing that was interesting was I, I did a little research and found out that at the beginning that wasn't what this was, right. mm -hmm. and so this was rather an an elegant and a, a a sort of a dark shadows mansion show about a family, and then all of a sudden it got very strange. Mm -hmm. And the minute it got very strange, the audience got much more involved mm -hmm. and loved it. So I think the writers also had a field day. It was, yeah. ooh, where yeah. can we go now? Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Dark Shadows pulled a lot from classic literature and I, um, the story uh, Carmilla, the vampire novel. Mm -hmm. I, think, I suspect that Roxanne was at least somewhat inspired by the, the lady I, vampire. I, I would think so. Yeah. I, I would think so. Um, but of course, you don't know any of this until later on, and you speak to somebody at a convention sure. years later, and they go, oh, yeah, that's that's where we got that. I, that was an inspiration for this. And of course, uh, Sam Hall was, was particularly, uh, many good writers, but Sam Hall was a genius. Yeah. And his wife was oh my God. on the show. Yeah. So, you know, he, he had a, a way in and also had something to someone to bounce off that was on it, that knew what was working, what wasn't working, yeah. and the whole thing. You came into the show in 1970. Mm -hmm. It had been running for several years at that point. Were the cast members that had been on the show welcoming when you came in? Well, when I came in, um, it's sort of not fair to say, when I came in, a lot of them, and the reason I came in, was they were shooting the movie. Oh, right. And so... They really didn't have a lot of time for me mm -hmm. because I was a new interest so that they could go work, mm -hmm. you know. So um, uh, uh, certainly Jonathan and, and, and Thayer David, I mean, just beloved. I, he was one of my favorites. Um, and then the younger guys, as, you know, as, as Chris Pennock and stuff as, as we went on uh, were good because we were lumped together while other people were doing the movie. Yeah. But it, it was... Um, 
they would come in, do something, and have to go on location. So it, it, it wasn't that um, I didn't feel integrated into it as much as I would have. I really felt like the new kid on the block. Right. Okay. You know? Once you were there for a little while, though, after a few months, did, did you then feel integrated, or was it always kind of a... I, I think I always felt a little bit of an outsider, mm-hmm. but, I mean, that's me. I'm, I'm, I was so paralyzed about not doing it right, mm-hmm. because they all knew how to do everything right. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to read... <laughs> all those wonderful screens on the floor oh. that rolled. I wouldn't know how to do that because that's not my background. Right, right. right. So it was like, why are you looking there? What, what? It was so interesting and difficult to get used to all of those cues. I, I was never thoroughly comfortable with it, so I was a little nervous all the time. Yeah. But they were all lovely. Oh, they were great, all lovely great. people. Yeah. What about uh, Dan Curtis? Was, how old was he like? Oh, but, you know, Dan had his office. He had his golf clubs. <laughs> he had his shirt on, ready to go, play golf. Um, I didn't have a great interaction with him. Absolutely no problem. But he had a specific yeah. secretary and a way of dealing with things. These are the changes for you. These are the changes for you. We have to do this, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it was live tape. Yeah. So nobody ever stopped except Miss Bennett was allowed to, and I don't think she ever did. But she was the only one yeah. allowed to. Uh-huh. Uh, only one allowed yeah. to. <laughs> The, the, somebody I, I worked with once in, in one of those scenes broke up and threw himself across the tarot uh, uh, cards once and was hysterical and we had to stop. And I don't think he ever heard the end of it. So it was like, but he couldn't help it. It was He just screwed up so many lines. and It was, it was just like, we're never going to get back there. And I thought, as a young actor, they're going to blame me. They're going to blame me. Just keep going, Donna, which I did. So I was saying my lines and his lines. And I thought, I don't know, this is going to work. Finally, he just <laughs> he lost it. Got hysterical. That's the only time I remember that happening. Miss Bennett was allowed to stop, but nobody else. No, you, you had quite a few scenes with uh, Jerry Lacey, as I recall. And, and we became friends afterwards. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful men, wonderful. Yeah. Are you still in touch? And not, not, I'm not in touch with him recently, which makes me sad because he was best friends of a dear friend of mine, another actor who uh, died recently, and I kind of wanted to get in touch with Jerry about it. But you know, this is West Coast people and East Coast people, and I'm one of the few people around here. I'm certainly friends with Marie Wallace. Oh, yeah, she's in New York. Absolutely. I mean, we don't live far from each other, and we talk. And it, it was it's really kind of interesting because Marie and I never worked together. We only met at conventions. Oh, the fest, our I see. festivals, yeah. That's the only time we met. And then we just we clicked it and, and that was it. We we hit it off. It yeah. was it was just absolutely yeah. fine. Oh that's just that's sweetheart. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh those fest I've went twice and I really enjoyed it, but I love just seeing the camaraderie of everybody on stage yeah. together and yeah, I know stories and things, yeah. Yes, a, a lot of fun. And as I had said yesterday, too, too many of the actors are gone. Yeah. I just And too many, too many too young. Yeah. You know, I recently. I really devastated to hear about Chris Pennant. Oh, one of my buddies, you know, on set, always had a great time with him. Always, uh, uh, we would like, uh, who's going to sit next to me at the table? No, you know. <laughs> Lara and Catherine are the stars. They have their own stuff. We have the crazy table where we have a good time here. Um, so, yeah, oh no, Chris, that, that really got me. That got me. How did fans react to you at that time when you came on to the show? Do you remember? Oh, I remember getting on the bus and people getting like, whoa, <laughs> mad at me. And I thought, what? I've just, I didn't mean to turn into a vampire. I, I really didn't. Um, no, a, a quite fine, but it was, such a, it was such a different time. It's really good to live in New York. You can see I'm such a minor pebble in, in the New York, uh, you know, notoriety. Because you, you see 
stars, real stars, on the street. And, and you see them in the store, and you go, I loved your show. And people leave each other alone. But it was something about that show that I, that you got on a bus, and they, how could you do that? <laughs> Why did, don't you love him? <laughs> Why did you? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I didn't get the next script. I don't know what I did. You were, I was talking about uh, your character the other day in a podcast episode, and I said, Roxanne was a scary vampire. Like, when you, when they did the makeup, it was. The makeup was makeup genius. And, yeah, it was. The really makeup good. was genius. Mm -hmm. And. I mean, I'm pale anyway, so when you add all this pale and then the gray cheeks, it's like, you, you don't look good, honey. You really don't look good. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't there a story where they first had you as a vampire when you were in the coffin? Didn't, weren't you oh, yes, I had my cross. I always wear a cross. I still have one on today, and it was like, oh, no, this is... <laughs> Did you realize it, or did the crew tell you? No, at, at some point I was, you know, because the nightgown was kind of low, and at some point I thought, oh, God, <laughs> nobody said anything. And it's obvious you, you're an actor. You're supposed to check yourself and do it. And it was like, no, I, I noticed it, but it was like I, I got that off and got it in my hand on the side. Yeah, but, uh, yeah that wouldn't have, well, it could have been another. Sam would have written another story about it. Right. You know? <laughs> He would have found a way around. Anyway, yeah. he would have got this would be interesting. The fan enthusiasm mm -hmm. for Dark Shadows still continues on. Unbelievable! Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on that? And just the fan, your interactions with the with the fan community. Over well, it, the years. it's really yeah. just absolutely absolutely lovely. I think I think I've been asked one untoward question oh. in my whole time since 1970 by a fan once now come on that's unbelievable yeah. because they didn't know how i could do this part as a catholic <laughs> very serious they they like how does that square with your church and i thought what's well, acting it's a, yes i'm an actor yes this is how this is how i can tithe i mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I it was it was so strange. But I mean, they were angry about wow. this. Oh gosh! Once, yeah. once, and the rest of the time, I mean, I wish more people wore, wore name tags because they see me and they all know me, <laughs> and I see them once every one or two or, or or maybe three years. And so and so the bottom line is I know these people. I go up and I hug them. I say, how are you doing? How, how I love that red hair. Yeah. I have blah blah blah. And I I can't keep all of them in my head. Oh, and of course impossible. we're we're all aging. And so everybody comes with their own problems, their you know, their own stuff. And it's like but but it's they they treat me like I'm part of their family in the best way possible, and that's unbelievable. There are no I did other soap operas. There are no other soap operas that have this going on. There are yeah. There's Star Trek yeah, and there's Dark Shadows yeah. I mean, and that's a that's honestly about it. It's that exact kind of thing. It's on that level of. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, somebody yeah. said, new kids on the block, they're doing a big reunion. And I thought, well, that's once. <laughs> you you know, you great, I'm glad you can get people in and take pictures. But it, it's not like everybody saying over the years, this is, uh, we've seen you this time. Now, do you know what happened since last time? One of the guys in here already said to me, I've got two stories I've got to tell you since the last time I saw you. Oh, I you know, it, I love it. <laughs> It's wonderful, but theater people also know how to treat other people. Yes. And to have people that care after all this time is astounding. They deserve my attention. They deserve every bit of goodwill. And there, there's healing for everybody in this. There's joyfulness for everybody. And for a lot of people, I always figure they were about... 10 years younger than me generally and that's the time that said I'm in high school I'm in grade school I don't fit in and that came on and they saw everybody who didn't fit in yes. 
And it was a good time for them. One gentleman I've seen at several conventions said to me the first time, I was saying good night, he said, you know, he did talent yesterday and he sang. A beautiful voice. And I said, you got to do more of that. He said, I gave that up when I was in grade school. And the, and I said, but it came back to you. He said, it's because of this group of people. And everybody cheered him on yesterday and said, sing one more. Sing one more. You know, I mean, that's like, yeah, that that's a group of, of very loving people. Yeah. And as the people in Newport said to some visitors here who were all having lunch, thank you for doing this and and contributing to our city. Thanks for coming here and doing this. We love that you come here and do this. So that's, that's right. That's, that's super. wonderful. That's good. Yeah. You mentioned theater people know how to how to treat other people and there's something Well, some of them. <laughs> there uh, I mean a lot of the actors in Dark Shadows came from the theater. We all did. So, yeah. We all did in yeah. the beginning. I yeah. think I think that was the difference. <laughs> we had great respect for each other. By the time I was doing other soap operas, you were going to acting school to learn how to act for a red light. And it's a whole different relationship, yeah. whole different yeah. relationship. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. God, I've done my share, but it's it's not the same connection. You know, yeah. it's not. Gosh, you know, uh, you said you know there are all these huge stars walking around New York, but if I saw any of them and I saw you, I would be way more excited to see Donna Wander. <sighs> I would be like, oh. I, I just saw a Nathan Lane. I think he's a genius. Oh, no I just saw him in a show. He moved. He moved about a block and a half away from me. I saw him in the store where yeah. I went to where I went to buy food the other day. Uh -huh. And as he walked by, I said very quick, hat on, head down, not talking in that Nathan Lane voice. And uh -huh. I, we'd just seen him. Yeah. I said, loved your show. Thanks. Uh -huh. And and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It, it. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Um, the the conventions, the Dark Shadows festivals, those are no longer uh, happening these days. No, don't seem to. Would you attend if they brought it back? Would you be interested? In oh, doing certainly, that again? certainly. Yeah. And it, it really would depend on who's running it. Somebody with the right attitude and the right way of treating everyone, right. fans and people who are asked to it. Somebody has to have like the the right attitude about doing it. Absolutely, yeah. there, there's such kindness that comes around. Nobody comes to tell you, "I really hated your performance, Donna." <laughs> I mean, they come to say, I, 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 "When I saw that," or "How did you do that?" Or "Were you sad when this happened?" Or yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. And it's really cool when people. I, I saw uh, Max drew. Uh, Illustrated. Oh my I gosh! Barnabas, they should, were showing it to me on the phone. I said, "Oh my god!" That's he amazing. did it at breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> as we have said, in yeah. pen. <laughs> he did it at breakfast. Um, lovely. Nice to pick up some of the younger people too. Yes. Yeah. A uh, lot of a lot of people are still, you know, with the podcast. I keep hearing from people who, of all ages who d discovered Dark Shadows even recently during the pandemic. I heard from somebody. Well, that that watching. would have been a kick yeah. to discover in the pandemic. Right. Yeah. Plenty of viewing. Uh, there are a lot of episodes. To, to the only see. the only thing yeah. I can say that that makes some of us crazy, which I don't know that your audience would care about, is when this was going into syndication, there were a handful of people who got paid very well. I don't get anything from it. Oh, because the Roxanne episodes weren't in syndication at that time, right? No, they, no, they just, it, it was the deal oh. with those people. So about, <laughs> so we went and fought like crazy. So about once a year, I get, I would guess, $20. <laughs> I cash that check the second I get it. Good. Uh, Good. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. So it was it was such a time uh, before. I mean, one episode of uh, SVU or uh, one episode of The Affair. While I don't make a lot of money on it, I still get residuals for where it's sure. sold. And I care about this stuff because I've always been a union person mm -hmm. for Screen Actors Guild. AFTRA and Actors' Equity. And I just made a decision early on that that's how I was going to be. And I'm glad. Good. Uh, you know, Good. I, I'm glad. Yeah. 
So back then, it wasn't in the contract that you would get any residuals because it was, no. just wasn't a thing. I, I uh, met Hat Priest who played Marilyn Munster in, yeah. in the Munsters, and I chatted with her, and she was telling me that none of the licensing, the products that they make of, of her character, she gets nothing. Oh, I've got a ton of yeah. Roxanne stuff out there. I don't get anything from it, Gosh. no. Yeah. But there, there were a group of people from the show – that we would call, but we found out much later, and of course they deserve it, we call the stars. Mm -hmm. And they were, I believe, they were taken care of. Uh, but because they were in everything, mm -hmm. you know, they yeah. were in everything. But that's, that's how times change. That's why people go on strike. That's why the writers are, in, you know, having their day. And it's like, you kind of wonder, there were a lot of... Directors don't get anything. What writers got anything after that? You know, you you yeah. you just don't know. You did the work to do the work. Right. So, and I don't really think we ever thought it would continue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here we are. And here, here we, we are. are. Yeah. <laughs> well, Donna, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Oh, this has been delightful. Gosh, I'm honored. And please let us know when your ne the next show is with the Zoom show. I'm just cutting in again. The Zoom event is now on July 22nd and 23rd, and it's called New York Stories. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern, both evenings. And once I have the link, I will add it to the show notes. Even if it's after this episode goes up, I'll just, uh, just keep an eye on the show notes. Once I hear anything, I will definitely add that to the show notes. I know that anything we can raise from it is, is going to go to charity, and I will find out a lot more. So I finished doing my piece here yesterday, and now when I go back to New York, I start relearning the piece I just did so I can get ready. Great. Your brain is a little difficult after your certain age <laughs> to keep retaining everything. Well, Seven-page model. Yeah, I it's a biggie. You would have a difficult time. It's a, it's a that. biggie, yeah. but yeah. it's fun. Oh, you're gonna this be has been delightful. Be great. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. I want to thank my guest, Donna Wandry, who was just an absolute delight. So charming. It was great getting to sit down and talk with her for a bit. And then we chatted for a little while after the interview as well. And uh, she was equally charming in our off mic conversation too, and uh, actually gave me a lot of good tips with regard to theater. Uh, so uh, it was certainly a pleasure talking with her. And it's a pleasure talking with you too. Uh, I hope you're enjoying Terror at Collinwood. Lots of more to come. I have some great episodes planned, lots of good stuff. And please do be sure to subscribe, to rate and review. Uh, if you're an Apple podcast, drop a review there, please, if you would. Uh, and if you're listening to this on YouTube, please uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, there is a big Dark Shadows anniversary giveaway coming on June 27th, 2023. So make sure you jump on over to the YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a comment on that video when it goes up. And thank you for listening to Terror at Collinwood. And for as long as they lived, the dark shadows never truly vanished, for there will always be Terror at Collinwood. Terror at Collinwood is a Penny Dreadful production.